Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. As you can see, I've already made a start on the Fobco drill restoration and uh, we've stuck a, the first of a couple of top coats on the uh, metalwork and I think it looks really good. These are the actual original Fobco colours, so if you have a look on that label there, it says Fobco Drill Press Cream. And um, these are the primed parts that I'm just about to slap with another coat, uh, or with the first top coat, should I say. And I'm really impressed how they've come out. So obviously, well, it might not be obvious to everyone, um, there's a, like almost like a grey oxide. You remember, you know, the red oxide priming paint that's on there? Well, that's what the primer is. It's called Brushing Primer Grey. And um, that's gone on all the cast iron parts. And then out here, we've used an etch primer for the non-ferrous parts. And what this has done, it's kind of chemically etched itself into the aluminium. And it's really grabbed. It's a very solid um, primer. I'm really pleased how these have come out. So these are also going to get a quick hit with a top coat as well in a moment. They're ready to go. So I'm just going to finish off all of the cast iron parts and whatever else there is and then there are a few other bits like these bushings and what have you these are going to be in black so I don't actually have any black enamel paint so I probably will have to nip somewhere into town and see if I can find some maybe from a model shop or something like that we'll see good morning ladies and gentlemen welcome to the vlog and we're starting this morning with a little bit of a muck around with the variable frequency drive and indeed I've cracked it so we've got the motor sat across there we've rewired the windings into a delta configuration which was easy to do and we've wired it up into the VFD <coughs> excuse me so the um, next job well, of course, I've also connected a 10k pot potentiometer to the system, and we've right wired pin one to ground, which should give us rotation in the forward direction. So let's just power this up. It'll come straight on. That's on, and immediately the motor is beginning to turn. And we're at 39 hertz, so let's just dial that right down to minimum, 3.6 hertz, and there you can see we should be getting, um, well I would say that's more than 3.6 RPM, but uh, that's what 3.6 hertz is going to deliver for us. So let's wind this up, you'll hear the motor. And we're up uh, around 60 hertz now and she's doing her thing spinning nicely i'm really quite pleased with that we have a functioning variable frequency drive <laughs> got a bit of a lisp there and i'm quite happy i can set the top end um hertz the top end frequency um to where i want this is just factory set where it's peaked to i think 60 76, 79, this is about 80 hertz, but you can go up to 100 I believe. And I'm not sure what those little lines at the bottom indicate, but I'll be having a look shortly. You see these here, maybe someone in the comments knows. But I'm pleased with that, it works. Let's just unplug it, there we go, we'll open the quick test, and the motor's stopped turning. I'm really quite impressed with this so far and I'll be looking forward to getting it into an enclosure and getting the whole thing rebuilt. Would you just look at her boys? She's beautiful. So I didn't get around to finding any black paint so these things have just still got primer on them. No big deal. I'll sort it out later on. And of course there's a couple of scuffs here and there from reassembly. But I was going to put a top coat on and varnish anyway once it's assembled. So 
that's not a big deal. What I have done, however, is I've wired up the potentiometer that you can see all the um, electronics inside. This is from the back. So I've wired up a potentiometer and um, a three-way switch. And this is uh, all feeding into the variable frequency drive, as you've probably seen before. And, of course, I've also installed a Hall effect sensor, which, if I can lift this lid off one-handed, is just there. So, basically, I've just drilled a hole in the top of this pulley and super glued a magnet in there. Then I just made this little bit of bar for the cable to run across. And if I put the lid on again, in fact, we'll leave the lid off so we can see it all spinning round in its full glory. So if I turn it on forwards, you can see that we are moving forwards at a very slow speed and the Hall effect sensor is registering. Then we're going around 61, 62 revolutions per minute, which is quite slow drilling. What does it say on here? And we're at 3.6 hertz. So that's interesting to figure out. So let's just turn this up to, there's the little indicators there, look. So that's shall we go to one. Setting one takes us up to 120 thereabouts. So that doubles the speed. And we're at 6.7 hertz. Kind of makes sense. So I wonder if setting two is going to take us up to 240 or 180. I wonder if it's going to add another 60 hertz or not. So let's just go to setting two. You can see it's moving a bit quicker. Oh, we've gone up to 272 RPM. And the hertz are at 15. So that's really interesting, isn't it, how it all works like that. Um, come back round again, just out of curiosity. Pop it up to setting number three. 400 RPM and 22.3 Hertz. Unfortunately, these are all on um, quick disconnect cables, so I can't, I'm gonna have to walk around every time I want to turn this up. So let's go four, 560, uh, 5, 710, 6, 870, and we're at 47 hertz. So we're at about the natural speed where this motor would run on this pulley setup. And this is completely arbitrary. I did it because obviously there's higher revolutions on the motor, less stress at low torque. And shall we go up to seven? At seven, we're doing a thousand RPM, and we have we have 55 hertz. And let's have a look at where 10 puts us. So 10 puts us 1460, and about 80 hertz so I don't know if that's good or bad for the motor to be quite honest but I'm sure somebody will find out somebody will know and we'll find out because they'll tell us in the comments so if we say we're just sitting at setting number five which is giving us about 740 rpm 740 rpm so let's stop the motor and then let's pop it into reverse. It's got a few seconds to ramp up. Oh, look at that. Doing exactly the same speed in the other direction. I'm over the moon. It works very well. What do you think, Froggy? I'm sure you're watching. She's a beauty, ain't she, mate? So I'm just waiting on an enclosure so I can mount the uh, tachograph and all this wiring, of course wants to be in an enclosure then I have to figure out somewhere where I'm going to actually mount the enclosure itself and then I also have to figure out somewhere where this is going to live we might have to move that small drill over there 
because it's um, well, it's not a scratch on this one, is it? We might take that one home or something, and then that can live over there. Although the table over there isn't really right for it, I might just let live on on the welding table. It's probably a better move, actually, isn't it? Well, there we go, folks. It's a shame this uh, bed's a little bit beaten up, and it's a shame that this isn't taller, so we could make it into a floor standing model. Maybe if I bought a shaft of steel, I could indeed swap it out and do that. But I'm happy with it as it is for a freebie and maybe a couple of hundred pounds worth on parts, if that. The VFD was 80 quid. The Hall effects sensor and the tachograph was like less than a tenner from Amazon. And of course, I've ordered some other bits. Well, these came with the VFD the um, potentiometer and the switch and they were only a few pounds each and then an enclosure oh and the paint of course the paint was about 40 quid so yeah about 150 pound we've got a refurbished variable speed variable speed fobco star i'm over the moon with it well, I've had a lot of fun with this today. Um, it's knocking on five o'clock, so again, this is going to be the end of today's footage. But I've just put another coat of uh, Fobco cream on there, and you know, I think it looks absolutely lovely. I'm over the moon, actually, how this whole project's come together. I just need to spend a little bit of time maybe putting some black on here although the silver doesn't look all that bad do you not think you know just leaving the primer as it is i might just go straight over the top of the primer with a bit of lacquer but to be honest i do want it to be black so maybe i will come back to that and then the bed i've just put primer on the bed mainly to stop it rusting underneath i completely coated it but it doesn't really need anything on there usually, it's just bare metal. I thought it would just be prudent to put some protection on there. Maybe just a squirt of oil would have been more than enough. And then we've got the, the chuck return. That's, that's working, look, as you can see, it just retracts itself. That was quite awkward to get this back on without, um, you know, making a bit of a mess with the paintwork here because I had to twist this with the grips and then fasten it in. Obviously this has got a return spring in there. And it was a bit difficult and that's what kind of led me to put another coat of paint on because I'd knocked the paint off around here a little bit. So all I'm going to do is leave this to dry overnight. Like I say, probably take a view on using black. Maybe I'll come around and do some intricate work and put a bit of black on this stuff here. Maybe a bit of black on this collar. Maybe a bit of black on there. But there's not a lot to be done. And then I think maybe three coats of lacquer jobs are good and and I can just do that over the next few days it's warm it's drying really quickly and uh, yeah if I don't get around to doing the black I'll just lacquer over the top of it and then in the future if I want it black I'll do it black but I think that looks pretty good as it is folks what do you reckon I'm rather impressed with myself anyway we'll see you later cheers